And that's one of the biggest misconceptions. I hear it all the time. I see it all the time. And I'm like, oh my God, is no one telling people about not buying stuff? Hey designers, welcome back to my channel with my inspiring designs with me, Justine, where all I want to do is inspire the event designer in you. If you're new here on my channel, welcome. Make sure to hit that subscribe button <laughs> and the bell to get notified on all the future videos we do here on my channel. So if you're in the early stages of your event designing business or you don't want to make the same mistakes that practically I did and other event designers are doing, please keep watching. So the first misconception that most people make as an event designer is I can target anyone and everyone. This is something that most event designers make when it comes to starting off their business. They don't niche down and niching down or niching down however you prefer to say it is basically you're super specific on who you're targeting when it comes to your business if you don't specifically target someone you will attract everyone <laughs> and you don't want that because you can attract the wrong type of clientele for your business and it will just literally make your dreams into a nightmare when you target everyone you get no one and that's just the way it is you have to be very specific on who you're trying to target so if you're trying to target moms who are pregnant who are about to have a baby make sure your business portrays that type of event in essence you would show a lot of the baby showers you'll be giving advice to moms to be you would tell them the struggles they may be going through and how you can help them so you want to be specific on who you're targeting when it comes to starting your event designing business Although there's an abundance for everyone, you want to be super clear to your clients when they come on your page or however they find you, how you're able to serve them. So if you are in the wedding industry, you know, you don't want to have people coming to you for parties per se for their five-year-old child. You want to be very clear on who you're targeting and how you bring that message is who you're writing to and your digital portfolio, which could be social media or your website and how it can be attractive to a certain type of client. The second misconception when it comes to starting an event designing business is, I want to do everything. Now, in, in essence, most people get into event designing industry to do an entire event. However, unless you're doing them on the side where you're running style shoots and you have a lot of money to spend, Starting off on a small business, very beginning stages of your business, you don't want to sit here and do an entire event when you first start off. One, you don't know what it takes to run a business just yet and you're learning. Unless you have a mentor who's going to show you step by step, then yes, obviously you start off with the entire design. But if you were like me, who had no one really in the beginning stages of my business, you want to make sure, just like what I said in the first one, you want to make sure that you're niching down and be specific. Start small. Do not start where somewhere where you do the entire event and you have no systems in place. You have no direction on who you're trying to target. Okay, You can get lost in the sauce if you're not specific and direct on what you want to do. So the first thing I would suggest for you guys to do is to focus on one thing. One thing that's going to have clients paying you to do that task. For example, when I first started my event designing business, I did that mistake. I literally was like trying to target everyone. I was doing centerpieces. Um, I was doing backdrops. I was doing organization. For, I, I was so lost in the beginning. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Until I had a, my husband. He runs his own business. And he's been running it for way longer than I have. And he said, why don't you focus on one thing and then master it and get people to buy that? And I was like, Phew. So what I ended up doing was mastered balloon garlands. Balloon garlands are super inexpensive and they're easy to do and the cost is very minimum and it has a large profit margin, which just means you make a lot of money from it. And people really wanted it. If you go to any party or event, more than likely besides a wedding, people want balloons. So I decided to master this and it literally opened the door 
for paying clients. When you are mastering one thing, at the event, you want to build that relationship with the client because the whole goal is to ensure that the client will come back to you and think of you in future events. So what I used to do is I used to go and get my balloon garlands, do them on the wall, and then actually talk to the client about what I can offer. Now, for the most part, I couldn't invest in a lot of stuff, so I had to kind of show them what I can and can do. And if they wanted the proof, you can obviously do a mini style shoot to introduce what you can do and hopefully they'll be able to pay you for the price. The third misconception that most event designers make when starting their business is, I don't need systems, I could just wing it. I got this. No, 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 no. Don't be like them. Don't be like me. <laughs> I didn't have any systems in place when it came to my event designing business. I mean, I was all over the place. I had no systems for when it comes to posting my on my social media. I had no systems on what happens when somebody DMs me or messages me and interested in becoming a client. I had no systems in booking a client. I had no systems for following up with a client after they booked the deposit. I had nothing in place that was literally helping me. And these were important things that you need prior to running an event designing business. If you don't create those systems in place, you will get lost, confused, and something will get neglected. It happens all the time for most event designers. And to be honest, it happens to most people who start an entrepreneurship. You have to create those systems in place. And what do I mean by systems? Because I'm saying that a lot. You have to develop a, a goal of what you want and then the steps it takes to complete that goal. So let's say, for instance, you want to post on social media. Well, what I do is I downloaded the app called Later. And it's an app that you can put on your phone and have access to it on the desktop. So what do I do is I batch all of my content for the entire month and then write all the captions out and it literally runs it Self. So that's one less thing I have to worry about because your time is of value. You don't want to be wasting your time on things that can be automated and help you out with your business. There's a lot of systems, a lot of apps that are out there that you can use to automate the systems so you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. The fourth misconception when it comes to starting an event designing business is I need to start getting stuff to build my inventory. Now, granted, somebody might be saying, well, I need all these linens, or I need a backdrop, or I need um, curtains, I need napkins. You need to stop. <laughs> That's what you need to do. The first question you have to ask is, do you have clients paying for all of these things? If it's no, which more than likely it isn't, you have to understand you're wasting your money, at least in the beginning stages. Remember, this is just for people who are starting off their business as an event designer. Stop. Before you argue with me, you do need to invest in your business, but in different types of items. So in this Amazon video right here, one of my favorites, I have shown you guys the things that I absolutely love from Amazon and all the list of tools and items that I bring for every event, practically every event. I also even mentioned what's in my toolbox and it's a free PDF that you can download. I'll link it down below so that way you are fully prepared. This stuff is way more valuable and will literally help your business in the future versus buying linens and having it sit in a bin until you get a client who's going to willing to pay for that entire bin. I made that mistake, guys. I bought linens and chair covers, charges and napkins, and I did it in the sense of I did it for my sister's uh, birthday party. And granted, it came out so beautiful, but guess how long it took for me to get someone to book me for an entire event? It was a whole nother year. But I didn't book my client for an entire event until a year and a half later into my business. And it's just because of how much effort I put into what I was focusing on first. Please understand, don't waste your money. Your money and your time are super valuable. You need to invest in things that are going to help you scale your business and guarantee those clientele versus spending money and it's sitting in your garage, in your attic, or in your car, or wherever you put it. And not literally paying itself. Okay. The first rule of thumb when it comes to entrepreneur, don't invest anything that's not going to give you a return back. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions. I hear it all the time. I see it all the time. And I'm like, oh my God, is no one telling people about not buying stuff? 
I'm telling y'all, please share this video for anyone who's starting their event designing business because I really want to help people not make the same mistakes because it seems like everyone's making the same mistakes and nobody's telling anybody how to move forward into their business. The fifth misconception when starting an event designing business is I can target everyone. I don't need to know who I really want to target. I'm literally going to have like a mark on my forehead because of the amount of times I'm like, tss, 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 tss. <laughs> are you a designer? Yes. Right. You love to design parties, but you have to put on an entrepreneur hat. It makes no sense if you're targeting everybody because guess what? You're going to get those people who don't want to pay your prices and they're just going to sound like this. Uh, I don't want to pay that. That's too much money. Who do you think you are? I don't need that. I could find somebody else and pay way less than what you're charging. Does that sound like someone you know? If you have even tried to get paying clients, you already know that's an issue. It's an issue with no matter what industry you're in. As soon as you start your business, a lot of people are not going to want to pay. But it's because you're targeting the wrong person. You have to have an ideal client. If you don't have an ideal client, you're going to be booking tons of people. Now, granted, in the midst of that, you may get an ideal client, but you don't even know who they are or what they'll look like if they were standing in front of your face because you've never identified who you're trying to target. When you target the wrong type of person, usually what event designers do, which is a huge no-no, is they undercharge, they give discounts, and they lower their prices just to make the sale absolutely not don't do that i did it most people do it don't do it save yourself the trip i'm telling you it's not worth it it's not worth to discount your your prices it's not worth it to sit here and say oh my god i can't even deal with this client why don't even book them don't do it don't make that same mistake instead write a list of who your ideal client is and i'm going to walk you through that right now so in order to identify who your ideal client is, you, one, you want to know how old are they? What's the age range? Where are they living in your a local area? How much money are they making? What do they believe in? What are their values? You know, are they creative? What qualities do they need from you that they don't have themselves? What problems are you trying to help them solve? You have to think about all of these things when it comes to your ideal client because as soon as you literally niche or niche down who your target audience is and who your target clients are you will get them non-stop you want to make sure you're targeting your ideal client because if you don't you're going to have a hard time working with clients you don't want to work with who would want to work with someone that's not willing not only not to pay your prices but to give you the hardest time not me i, I don't even deal with those people it's okay to have failure and objection and rejection. I mean, you're talking to the person who always is a people pleaser. People denying me? But it was a skill I had to learn as an entrepreneur. Business is business. If they don't want to book with me, that's fine. It just means you're not my ideal client, and I'm okay with it. And as soon as I let that portion of my mindset go, it was back to back to back paying clients. And I'm telling you, if that's happened to you, give this a video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments your experience because I really think we should all be sharing our experiences together. So the last misconception that most event designers make, and this is the big one, I don't need a plan, I'm just gonna wing it. I don't have to walk step by steps. I'll just kinda go through the motions and learn it as I go. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? As a former teacher in the classroom, as a person who always had to constantly plan everything, for a person not to have a business plan in place, how will your company be successful if you don't have a business plan? Now, I can't fault the ones who don't know anything when it comes to being an entrepreneur, but you need a plan even if it is just a rough draft, even if it just highlights the things that you want to accomplish. Part of your business plan is how much do you want your company to make by the end of the year? And then you kind of work backwards on how to get to that point. Your company and your business, if you really want to take this serious, you need a direction. And having a direction is creating a business plan. A business plan is super important. And there's a bunch of free templates that you can use online. You need to know stuff like this in order to start your business. Because there are steps that you have to take before you even book your client. So I am actually helping 
one of my students now she's in the very early stages of her business and she has no direction on where to go so we've been jumping on a call um, for a few weeks and I've been helping her through it I'm also helping another designer with their prices and packages because that's probably the number one thing I get asked so if you're definitely interested in getting that one-on-one -on -one time for free that's what I'm I'm telling you there's no string is attached the only string attached is that you have to complete the survey down below if you complete it I will choose three people to hop on a free call one-to-one -one, no strings attached and you get to ask a certain question and then we I can help guide you in what I did for my business now are there multiple ways to find the answer absolutely I'm just gonna help you with the way I did it I did get paying clients in my business when I first started out however it took me a long time because there wasn't a lot of information out there so I'm trying to help those in the same industry and community because I know what it's like to feel lost I know what it's like to not know where to start to be overwhelmed and stressed out especially when it comes to pricing your packages so if you need that help and you really value the one-on-one -on -one time with someone who's been there definitely click the link down below well that's it that is my top six debunks of misconceptions when starting an event designing business i hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up leave me a comment down below if you have any other questions what i'm trying to do is answer those questions while we have this we have so much time on our hands and if you're new here and you made it this far in this video you might as well hit that subscribe button and that bell and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye You want to know how many times I've recorded this video? I know you're not answering yourself that, but I'm going to tell you anyways. This is my third time.